against Sham Duncan for the Marine. For the Mean Green, we are underway, and the Aggies will control the tip. In the hands of the Oregon transfer, India Rogers. Barker goes long range to Sahara Jones, and now a double team down low on Ware. Rogers wants a three point shot off the iron, but Barker scoops it up. Yeah, Jason Burton, he watched the film. He knows what she did yeah. against AM Corpus Christi. That will roll out on a three point shot from Sahara Jones. The UNT lineup. Jocelyn Moore had 24 points in the Mean Green's last game, the win over Grambling. Misha Lampkin trying to work against Barker. Loose ball, and the Aggies have a steal. For AM, those transfers joined on the floor by Sahara Jones and Janaya Barker. So after the whistle, the Mean Green with the basketball. And it's Ariana Hardaway going to the basket. Ariana Hardaway. And the first two to North Texas. So right here in this zone, I love that AM is trying to get it down to the corner and shift that zone down to a trapping position to look and see any of those skip passes if they're open or find the middle just like they did there with Ware. Well, they have some open looks from outside, and this time... Kulabali drains the three-pointer. Well, I think it's absolutely vital that they understand when you find the middle of a zone, that's when a zone has to be compact. They have to dive in. So that's when the open looks out on the side of the perimeter immediately become open. And Barker got a rebound on the other end. Sahara Jones with a look at a three. That's front iron. Ware tried to run the rebound down. A save attempt. It'll belong to the Aggies. And an easy two for Janiah Barker. And again, we talk about finding the middle of a zone. Anytime you find the middle, it makes that zone have to get into the paint and understand that almost anybody could have that ball. That skip out to the pass to Kulabali is a great pass. Caught in a double team is Misha Lampkin, and oh, they'll turn it over. Now, timeout. Got a timeout. Well, <laughs> she uses that to her advantage because she'll tell you when she looks at the transfer portal, she doesn't recruit people that she doesn't have a relationship with, and if she's coached you in USA Basketball, right. that helps qualify them. That helped her with Lauren Ware. It did. Who transferred over from Arizona. Last two to the mean green. It's 5-4, and Barker wants a three, and the Aggies have doubled up North Texas 8-4. And I love that Janiah Barker is coming out firing. She didn't have the game that she wanted in the first game against a and Corpus Christi. But she changes her mentality for this game. And she's coming out looking for all the open shots, but she's not forcing it, Will. She's coming at it a little bit different way. Jumper is good by Desiree Colonel. Well, I like what you said about Janiah Barker when we were prepping for this game. It's kind of a different role for her this year. It is. She's not having to narrate the story. She is getting to be a part of the story. Sahara Jones, the returnee on the floor with her, just put the Aggies up four. That's out of bounds. It'll go to Texas A&M. A little over 12 points per game. Led the Aggies. She and Sydney Bowles, both were on the all-freshman team in the SEC. But more help this year. A lot more help this year. <laughs> in terms of the transfers coming in. Here's one of them in Koulibaly. That's front iron. But Barker got the offensive rebound and the putback. That's out of bounds. That's off the hand. And their first two games of the season, they haven't been behind in the score column. Yeah, we thought it would look a little different for them today because when you go against Texas A&M on the road, you probably are going to have to play from behind. That's right. A little bit. And India Rogers just sized one up. And the Aggies are up nine. So, yeah, North Texas essentially playing from behind for the first time this year, and they are in a nine-point hole. I think one thing that Coach Burton was hoping would bring to the table is their zone defense would really slow Texas A&M down, not give them that fast-paced offensive mindset that they love. But what they're doing is A&M's taking these open look at threes, and they're draining them. Yeah. And now they get wide open under the basket. Lampkin wants to go against Ware. Oh, and hitting the floor hard was Janiah Barker. She got upended on that rebound attempt. I am so thankful for Janiah Barker's ponytail. And she bounced right back up. She did. <laughs> it shook it off immediately. 
MJ Johnson. The iron won't let that fall. North Texas back up the floor. Midway point of the first quarter on this Sunday afternoon from College Station. I love the big hedges by Texas a and defense. Their posts are going to come out. They're going to be very aggressive on a big hedge trying to trap the ball as it comes off of the screen. Sahara Jones going to get called for a foul on that three-point attempt. I was going to say Wooten is not who you want. So one of two and one shot free throws at 73%. Well, and Wooten didn't play last year due to injuries. It was a wasted trip when you put Wooten at the line for three shots, only making one of them. That's right. But now North Texas back on offense. 17-9, to Aggies on their home court. That's a whistle, fouled, and going As to the... Coach Blair would say, you can smell their breath. <laughs> I always remember that being his saying, is you want to be so close, you can smell He's them. really getting out and being aggressive on the three-point line. But UNT is being smart, trying to create some pressure and draw another defender in to see what other either skip pass options are open or to see if them's defense just breaks down in totality. They were... Pressing right there at midcourt. MJ Johnson finds Lauren Ware. Lauren Ware. A&M right now being led by Barker with seven points. North Texas has Colonel with four. That's a turnover. Today a Hilton in the game for the Aggies. Just got rid of a pass to MJ Johnson. Here's Sydney Bowles who's also in. Is conditioned enough yet to be able to maintain enough pressure on Texas A&M to make them uncomfortable. Tanea Hilton with a rebound off the miss. And Sydney Bowles wants another one. That one's back iron. Aggies with the offensive board and on the floor. But that's the mentality. Yeah, it that. is. Isn't that one of the best three-point shooters in the country? Mm-hmm. Proved it. Uh, she got on a tear at the SEC tournament. a and pulled off a couple of upsets in the bracket. Furthest the 13 seed has ever made it. Aggies have opened up a 13-point lead here against the Mean Green. Jumper will fall. Nice. And UNT, again, doing a really good job of just being patient on the offensive end. They're not trying to go too fast. They're trying to draw A&M's defense in and just find the open man, the one shot that makes the most sense. Shot crop uh, running a little low. Not a problem. Again, I go back to she understands angles with the best of them. Well, and that's a turnover by Desiree Colonel and Barker. Barker is really shaky. She understands her role. It took her a game to figure it out, but she is a smart cookie. And I think that's what USA Basketball has taught Barker, right. is that she can play a role without having to be the star of it all. Now she has a steal. Oh, less than a minute to go in this opening quarter. A&M has put up 29 in these first 10 minutes. These two teams are tired. They're tired, <laughs> and you can see it in their offensive sets. It's been a quick pace. You're right. Three-point shot. Shot clock to game clock. About three seconds on that difference. I'm going to take their time. 10 seconds on the shot clock, 13 overall. They're just going to find the right shot. It'll come from Hilton, back iron. That's out of bounds. I think it's last touch by North. To look for the contact and one. And the freshman is in the game, Williams. They were inside now to kick it back out. Now just going to have to put up a shot off the front iron, and that will close it. So that was the news in College Station earlier today. A press conference is set for more on it at 5 o'clock today. That is an offensive foul. And Aggies up the floor. Soleil Williams, the freshman. That's a block shot by Jocelyn Moore. I like that she didn't fade away, though. I like that she, as soon as she got blocked, she was able to go after her own block and go retrieve it, set the ball back up with a, uh, unfortunately, the shot clock didn't reset, though. So One now, thing to pay attention yeah, to. Now running low. Williams has it again, just under 5 now. She'll operate with a baseline jumper. That miss, but on the other side of the basket is Tanea Hilton. Aggies have KK Green in the game. Drawing defense right here. Green missed the opener due to illness. So it's the first time she steps on the floor. That is a tie ball. 
if her offensive player is on the other side of the court. And when she does that, that's a scary look for any opponent because she knows how to tie the ball up quickly. K.K. Green had to run that down before it got over courtside to us. So Green's from Chicago, the senior. She started to shoot the three ball well down the stretch last year. Shot clock low. Front iron. Koulibaly got fouled as she tried to go back up. And Koulibaly definitely has experience. And it's all about angles too, Will. When the closer you are to the baseline... Koulibaly got to 1,000 points in her career in the Absolutely. NM uniform. We, you could tell already. That's a tie ball. But she did reference. There was a year she was an assistant at Georgia that they got down to six. And it was for quite a while. So she said, I hated going through those days, but at least I had something to harken back to on how to manage practice and, and that, get through right. it all. You had to be such a, a manager of time yes. during the game. You have to preserve legs. You have to recover well. And what do they say? If you can make it through it, you're better off for it. In the That's end. right. <laughs> so the Aggies, a 19-point lead. She helps KK Green up. So the technical foul will be on North Texas, and it's Rogers at the line making the free throw. Jason Burton wants a further explanation. And now it's Aggie's ball. And so it is, U, UNT is going to do a switching man-to-man -man defense. So all the guards are going to be switching. All the posts are going to be switching. They're going to try to be efficient on the defensive end while they're in a man-to-man. -man. Bowls. Well, <laughs> Lauren Ware said it's Aggie's ball. The main green say it's ours. It'll go. Lauren to the Aggies. Way. Yeah, Lauren Ware. <laughs> Look at Lauren Ware down low, really working for position against Lampkin, who is, her one entire job is to try to get her with a forearm in the, the top of the butt and push her out beyond the block. And again with the shot clock running low, Sydney Bowles goes to the basket this time. Rolled out on a three-pointer by Jocelyn Moore. And Rogers wants one of her own. That's front iron. And you only get away with that when you're a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> if she could play well this year and get on an all-SEC team, that's a true rarity. It is. Three and different teams, all-conference four. Now she's at the line by herself after... It looks like another technical foul on North Texas. And let this soak in. She has scored over 1,600 points in her career, not averaging anything less than 13.1 points per game. Mm -hmm. Ultra productive. Ultra productive. And a great leader already with three assists. Mm -hmm. To my account, zero turnovers. Yeah. Bowles to Barker. You could tell Barker wanted to drive, and she went all the way, got it off the glass. And with no backside help rotating over to help trap Barker, that's where Janiah feels very comfortable taking someone in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that was a much-needed three for North Texas by Desiree Colonel, but it is a 24-point Aggie lead. And Colonel really having to take this UNT team and put her, put them on her back. And you could tell that their mentality was totally based off of, right? Once they got healthy, that run they made. Tried to cover quickly. <laughs> she did. Not, not gonna happen. Though. If I close my eyes, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, maybe the ref will have theirs closed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> really good at trying to strip the ball in motion. Um, whether it's near their chest, and trying to strip it and create that turnover. And then Moore made one of them. Again, Moore had 24 points in the Mean Green's last action, the win over Grambling. And again, North Texas sticking with that man-to-man -man defense, trying to te take Texas a &E. Quickly up the floor. There and it is. now a rip by India Rogers. She may want to take it the distance. She has Ware trailing, but how about that step? 
Rebound Sahara Jones. Colonel applying a little pressure there, making it uncomfortable for Sahara to get up and down the floor. And now Jones got fouled. <laughs> but that was impressive going on. Of Lauren Ware. They're having to do some unconventional things, both in just post moves and having to come out further outside of the paint to even get the open ball. And that's what Joni Taylor talked about. Long range three pointer here. That will miss. That's a wear rebound with Lauren. She did score on opening night. Just two points here today, but like Joni Taylor said, North Texas obviously knows she's there. That's right. Low. And you can make an impact in so many ways. And the Aggies defensively as a whole, I mean, you've held North Texas to 19 in the first half. We told you what they were averaging. That's just pretty impressive in its own right as we get a whistle. Ware will go to the line after the whistle. The Aggies have opened up a 30-point first-half lead. Cutting into it is Jocelyn Moore. She's starting to get a little bit more into the flow of it. Yeah, her first and four tries. Lauren Ware. Step into the block where Lauren was going and take took a charge. Yep, maybe a little in motion, not much, but good defense by UNT. And now, offensive foul. It's hard contact. Then and where? <laughs> and then Lauren. tumbled over. That's Lynn. right. Her, uh, Gracious. Yeah, Hilton. Well, that's out of bounds. Won't even get a shot up. The Aggies. What a terrific first half. And as far as what is coming up for North Texas, they're going to be on the road for a while. They don't go back home until December 1st when they host Pepperdine. So this starts a road stretch for the Mean Green. Rebound by Lauren Ware immediately to get us going in the second half. And still Lampkin trying to find her identity in this game, having to face a much bigger Lauren Ware. Barker tried a contested turnaround. Now reaches to try to get the steal. Almost came up with it. Joni That's was too high. not very happy with Barker's decision. We're in the right spot. She may have said, hey, coach, I was close. Yeah. <laughs> Which I can promise you is exactly not what Joni wants to hear. <laughs> The rebound off the miss by Duncan. Koulibaly tried to get in the passing lanes. And from behind. Getting a pick is Rogers, floater. And the rebound to Colonel. And UNT wanting to get up the floor. Yeah, this, is, this is the <laughs> difference of what half country forgets about that rule. <laughs> And Janiah Parker. <laughs> she felt like she didn't swipe any. She, yeah. Great, great, uh, great reaction by Lampkin to catch the attention of the referees. Fire away. That's front iron, and that's another Lauren Ware rebound. She wants to get it up the floor to Sahara Jones. Will Jones go all the way? She's going to turn around with a jumper. How about that rebound by Ware? In between two defenders, and then she's back. And then that's where UNT has to do a better job of what we call butt in the gut, and then remove, eliminate something like that from happening. But she will not go easily. That's right. The way she rebounds. That is right. a showing good man-to-man -man defense, trying to trap and hedge high, not letting anyone get around them. But what a great take. Barker just set, decided to put up a jumper that won't fall, and the rebound to Anaya Johnson. Oh, nice pick by KK Green. Eventually ran it down. Now the behind the back dribble and the pass to Kulabali. Kulabali. What a point card does is she puts her players in a great offensive position to finish the shot. And it's kind of like I said earlier, you feel lucky after you've gone That's through. right. After that's right. The fact. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel the when you're when you're it, in yeah. the trenches. <laughs> you look at those box scores at the end of the game. How many minutes did I just play? Did I really play all, all 40, 40 minutes? Again? Yeah, yeah. Again? For the 18th yeah. game in a row. That's what it had to <laughs> That's what it had to feel like for the Aggies. This is another offensive foul. 
and this is thrown by Janiah Parker. Well, we're back out of the official review. They were reviewing whether Jalen Millard threw an elbow or not. Got back to play. That it was nothing, that it was a basketball move. Nice shot. Feel any longer. And Barker is 7 of 11 from the floor. She's made both three pointers that she's taken. It's a great kick by Sydney Bowles over to KK Green. On the floor trying to grab the rebound. We're going to get another tie ball. The small things, the small details that make the big difference in trying to finish out this third quarter. Yeah, like we said, things will get tougher on North Texas for the simple fact that they're going to stay on the road for a while. This starts a road stretch away from Denton this game Desiree. against a and Desiree Wooten finds the basket. That rattled out. Now who's going to grab it along the baseline going after that first half was essentially all a and M. Floater and a whistle. Foul on the end. And even so, just in this last possession for herself. Now Robinson is one of the transfers for North Texas. He's the winningest head coach in A&M Commerce history. And Robinson and Colonel came with him, both productive. Colonel's been solid today. Absolutely. And Robinson doesn't take a lot of threes, even though she's a true guard. But she is a guard that likes to put the ball on the floor and get to the hole. Wow. And with Janiah Barker coming off the floor after Barker picked up her third foul. Probably centered around, look, you're having a great game, but the foul trouble, you know we can't be there. Kulabali. Maybe not the too, shot. Yeah, too she, far. Uh, wanted to take. Now that's better. That's better. Drive to the basket. Her yeah. getting closer to the basket is definitely within her range and more of her game. That's a chance at a three point play. Very talented player. Can't connect. Impressed. Had them take time off the clock, but then allowed AM to get the offensive rebound and this second chance opportunity to reset the shot clock. Jumper today a Hilton. Closing in on the final minute of the third quarter. Uh, fake. Put the ball up in the air. Pump fake it. In your, in your scouting report, you've got to find a way to stop it. Likes to get that defender in the air. K.K. Green with a pull-up jumper. That one won't find the mark. Nice catch to get that to fall by Jocelyn Moore. And UNT has controlled the third quarter between tempo and shot selection. They have done exactly what they set out to do coming out of the halftime half stint. A&M will reset the offense, and they'll go with under 10 on the shot clock. And Lauren Ware got open. Great slip from Lauren Ware. She's going to follow the point guard right off the top and observe where the top of that zone, how it's going to rotate. Once they make a decision, Lauren Ware chose to slip down to the bottom block and be wide open, just North Texas not rotating exactly the way they should have. Now Ware, a rebound. It's rebound number 10. A&M could put up the last shot. They're going to get a traveling call on K.K. Green. So here we go. North Texas will put up the last shot. Going all the way in, putting up a floater. And it's those qualities that makes her the type of player that we're seeing her become. So she and the Aggies... A 22-point lead to open up the final quarter of play this afternoon on the floor. For Lauren Ware to come shoulder to shoulder with KK Green, not giving that defender any room to squeeze in between, therefore allowing KK to get that charge foul call. And Soleil Williams, the freshman now in the game, the true freshman from Cincinnati. KK yeah, giving them yeah. all kinds of fits <laughs> once again. This is a really good team to allow those freshmen to come in. And these freshmen have never played at the collegiate level, and UNT is a very... 
A&M put up 49 in the first half today, but just the 12 in the third quarter went a little bit cold. Hilton trying to solve that. Back iron, offensive rebound by Moore. And Soleil Williams thought she had good defense and all ball. But one that will have a bright future at Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. You talk about new faces. A&M returning seven, gaining eight. She doesn't recruit someone she doesn't know or hasn't played against because it's not worth her time, effort, energy. She wants to create relationships, and she wants to recruit the right kind of person. And as we've said, Team USA, they have played well in the second. Rodgers. That was, we had a good angle on it. That was right on line, just a bit short. Whistle. I think they got Hilton. Out of South Grand Prairie, Texas. And that'll be one that will be very highly touted. Learn staff will continue to sign. Has a lot of the same qualities, leadership, Mm -hmm. both skill play and leadership that Sidney Carter off the national championship team in 2011 does. Yeah. Barker adds. Just crossed the midway point of the fourth quarter. Off the glass. If you're going to go out, you and better lose to the best. Do it. Guns a blazing That's against right. the best. You That's know? right. <laughs> Just. And, you know, Coach Blair, who still comes to the games and supports Coach Taylor and is, is one of her biggest fans, is has such a decorated history here mm-hmm. at Texas a 19 seasons. You saw the list of accolades and play, former players that just adore everything he is. And Coach Taylor has been so good to all of his former players mm-hmm. and inviting them back into the program, right. making sure they still know that this is their home. Mm-hmm. How about that block shot by Sahara Jones and Sam Yu in their next action. Sydney Bowles front iron on the jumper. But I mean, we're talking about Gary Blair and – there's a layup by Lampkin. And just, it was loaded. And you know, he loved every second of it because he oh, got yeah. to interact with all of them. Well, he held court with them. He, <laughs> he was the one did. doing all the talking. He yeah. held court with every last one of them. <laughs> I think including Pop. I bet. I can't imagine being the fly on the wall. Home. Mm-hmm. But it was while they were short and the players. Not They'll take start- a better shot out of this year. That's right. Yeah. Not starting as many freshmen. They're a little bit more tenured now. You got new faces with the eight newcomers. Totally different team mm-hmm. than what Purdue saw last year. Aisha. Koulibaly scores, but how about North Texas? It's too little too late, but they had gotten this within 12 in the second half before Koulibaly played the role well in this one. And one that will be watched in the film room yeah. by is something that Joni will use as teaching opportunities for this very new group of players that are still getting to know one another. And North Texas has outscored A&M 33-19 in the second half. But the Aggies put up 49 in that first half. Thor and Ware Thursday. Yeah, big test in Big Ten country. Will, this is one game that North Texas is going to be pretty proud of when it's all said and done. Texas is going to be a really tough team to beat. Sahara Jones at the line. North Texas had gotten within 12 here in the fourth quarter. A&M stretches it back out to 19. Blocked shot. Lauren Ware. This is where you expect to see Texas A&M slow it down, 15 seconds left in the game, and just play out and enjoy the win. No need to put up a shot. Hats off to North Texas. Mm -hmm. They played an incredible second half. Very well done in the second half, but it was a 49-22 Aggie lead at halftime. They got out in front.